Good morning, everyone. Uh, when you go for your oral examination, uh, there's a, a big chance that you will be asked questions about heavy lift cargo uh, because uh, lifting heavy weights impacts the stability of the vessel um, and the trim and the list of the vessel as well. So there's a high possibility that you'll be asked questions about it. Now, in that regard, um, we've talked about heavy lift operations before. But because I was making a series of videos on grain operations on ship, I thought I'll take up uh, this topic as well and uh, talk a little bit about the kind of cranes that are used for heavy cargo on ships and what are some of the implications of using such kind of cranes, the different parts of the cranes. Uh, this will be very handy for you uh, for your cargo work examinations or your oral examinations uh, because as you grow in ranks, you become a chief officer. It's important for you to know about a little bit about the implications uh, and the little intricacies about uh, crane operations, especially when involved in heavy lift cargo. So the cargoes to be transported by ship are actually continuously increasing in weight. Uh, the shipping industry they, uh, these days they are building ships for heavy lift so every new generation of ships are getting cranes with um, higher capacity uh, higher safe working load uh, than the previous uh, uh, model of cranes now the cargoes uh, that this type of specialized ships are built for uh, can be complete installations for the petrochemical industry or power stations and uh, similar ships so as long as there are heavy components amongst the total package um, nowadays of course cranes are coming with a lifting capacity of more than 150 tons or so and these are the cranes uh, that are called cranes for uh, lifting heavy cargo so the lifting capacity can actually be uh, all the way up to 800 tons that's the kind of cranes that are being manufactured depends on of course what kind of cargo you'll be loading and how it impacts the stability and the draft of your vessel but there are ships uh, that are designed for very heavy lift uh, cargoes, uh, machineries, um, big installations, and it may be for smaller distances, but those ships are specially built for that. So there are two basic types of heavy crane cargoes. One is the conventional crane, uh, and the other one is a uh, called a mast crane. So here what you see is a heavy lift ship with a very heavy piece of cargo, and it's working in tandem. Uh, you can see the different parts of the cranes have been highlighted for you. So the conventional crane, it has a crane house mounted on and revolving through a slewing uh, roller bearing with the crane jib connected to the crane house. Now the slewing bearing is bolted to a pedestal uh, which is part of the ship's construction and it has to take the full tilting moment of the crane uh, plus the weight of the cargo. So this bearing usually is a three row roller bearing. Uh, this type of crane has the advantage that the winches are located inside the crane house and slewing of the crane can be carried out unobstructedly. So there, there is no problem in slewing the crane around uh, with the heavy lift. Uh, there are no obstructions on the way. The next type of crane is called the mast crane. And again, you can see the different parts of the crane on in this picture as well. Um, and make yourselves familiar with what each of these parts are called, especially if you have not been sailing on ships which carry uh, cranes or they have their own cranes or they carry heavy lift cargo so it's a good uh, opportunity for you to make yourselves familiar with the different parts of the crane especially the jib uh, the topping wire the topping lift what is the mast of the crane what is the slewing bearing that i keep talking about like in the previous slide itself i was talking about the slewing bearing so it is the bearing about which the shear the crane is rotating uh, you can see the mast foundation. The mast foundation is also a very important part of the structural component of the vessel because that pretty much takes on the weight of the crane and not only the weight of the crane, it is the foundation on which the crane is built and the crane together with the weight of the cargo takes a heavy toll on the mast foundation. Uh, so structural, structurally, if you think about it, it's a, it has a very important role in the ship construction. Then you have the cargo hook. The cargo hook uh, is the hook uh, around which, of course, the slings are placed so that the cranes can be lifted. You have the hook of the auxiliary host. So the auxiliary host supports the main host in uh, taking the lift, uh, taking the rather the weight of the cargo, uh, distributes the cargo load. Uh, then you have the top slewing unit at the top, which is also rotating uh, the sheaves and the bearings and the wires around it. So these are some of the important components of the uh, crane and the different parts of the crane. If you have a crane on your ship, uh, 
you have manuals for that as well so if in if you go in for orals examination and the um, surveyor starts asking you about crane operations cargo operations involving crane or heavy lift cargo operations uh, always refer back to the documents all right so refer back to the crane manuals refer back to the chain register that is required to be carried uh, and then there is the ism checklist for heavy lift cargoes so even if you are not very familiar with these kind of cargo operations uh, referring back to the documents which will guide you uh, in such situations also impresses the surveyor so you it's not possible for you to know about every type of ship every type of cargo operation or every type of uh, vessel but just refer back to the um, documents and that will help you a lot all right so the mast crane is installed around a mast which is welded to the ship's construction at the lower part of the mast a platform is mounted which can rotate around the mast and on this platform the jib or the derrick is mounted so on top of the mast is a free turning swivel head with sheaves for the hanger and runner wires uh, the winches are installed inside the mast or inside the pedestal of the mast or even below a deck uh, it's important that you guys understand that uh, with such uh, why i talk about winches inside the mast or i talk about motors inside the mast because these are most likely hydraulic motors they operate on a lot of oil and there can be oil leakages inside crane compartments so if you are the chief officer or you are the officer on watch make sure that these compartments are being regularly dried and cleaned because they become slippery surfaces they are a danger to the safety hazards so people are uh, constantly going to climb up and down these ladders and these masts so they should not slip and fall and um, there should not be an accident because then it of course it is frowned upon so make sure uh, these oil leakages are constantly cleaned you have sawdust available you have sponges available uh, you have cotton rags available that you can use for drying up these surfaces and keeping it clean all right so i'll go back to the crane operation so you saw the previous crane the hanger and the runner wire go through the mast to the top swivel and this arrangement normally restricts the swiveling ability uh, to about uh, 260 degrees plus and minus 270 degrees so in connection with the cost of the slowing bearing conventional cranes are built to a maximum of about 400 tons so higher lifting capacity is not economic and technically too difficult so above for about 400 tons the mast crane is mostly used so these cargoes have impact on the ship's construction and the double bottom and the tank top have to be adapted to a large number of tons per metric square uh, stability requires anti healing tanks uh, that you see now on your screens so anti healing tanks with high capacity pumps to prevent a list of the ship during cargo lifting from outside the ship usually side tanks are used for the purpose now what you see on your ship is a heavy lift ship with hatch covers uh, that are fitted as portable tanks and this is done to enlarge the water line area and also the stability so to to increase the stability these side pontoons can be used and they are attached to the ship's side um enlarging the moment of inertia of the water line which can then be empty or filled with water so it helps in the adjustment of uh, stability of the vessel so the cranes are often used in tandem to load a heavy part together and the load control therefore is computerized and both crane drivers have information on display about their own crane but also about the other crane so reach and load are maximized Uh, via the load and moment curve uh, i'll talk about the load and moment curve i'll talk about the hoisting diagram as well very soon and uh, these uh, load and moment curves are calculated for each individual crane and they are not to be exceeded so for the heavy cargoes the ship is also provided sometimes with uh, special tools such as heavy slings shackles spreader beams so you can see the spreader beam is on your screen right now now uh, also suitable lashing gear has to be provided Um, all these tools are load tested marked and certified now you, you if you are wondering why for heavy cargoes uh, slings shackles spreader beams are provided that is for uh, you to have the provision to lift the cargo on your own so sometimes uh, a cargo may come and uh, it needs to be lifted by your own ship's crane so in that regards because if cranes have been provided on your ship uh definitely uh, the and when i talk about cranes i'm talking about cranes that are used for cargo operations and definitely your ship will also be provided with uh, spreader beams um, and uh, shackles and heavy slings so make sure uh, lashing gear so make sure uh, that uh, of course they have they'll be load tested marked and certified uh, details will be provided in the chain register but make sure that you maintain them in good condition oil them grease them uh, do the uh, planned maintenance as required for these attachments as well i'll talk a little bit about the hoisting diagram of the crane now 
and uh, the capacity of the crane actually depends on the uh, range and the maximum load of all the parts of the crane uh, together as well as apart from each other individually as well all right so the graph that you see here shows the important impact of the range uh, of the parts of the crane so the healing angle is also clearly visible uh, in this graph all right so you can see the uh, this is what a hoisting diagram for a crane uh, looks like uh, then you also see an, an additional diagram here which shows you the lifting capacity for various jib angles and the range so this is a more, uh, a more numerical representation of the hoisting diagram uh, that i showed you before so this is a numerical representation so you can see for various angles of the jib that is the angle up to which the jib can move you can see the lifting capacity is mentioned together with the range uh, and this range of course will change with the lifting capacity and the jib angle rather because the uh, the topping wire also needs to be adjusted as you lift the jib of the crane or you uh, bring it down the the range uh, of the topping wire the topping lift they all have to be adjusted as well and uh, so does your lift capacity change as well so you can see here how the lift capacity changes with various jib angles uh, one last thing to end the presentation today is uh, I'll talk about stabilizing pontoons. So if you don't know about stabilizing pontoons, it's important you can see here on your screen. Uh, this uh, shows uh, the use of stabilizing pontoons to increase the water line of the area of the vessel in use. So these stabilizing pontoons are actually employed when the healing tanks of the vessels, they fail to reduce the uh, list of the ship to an angle of less than about three degrees. All right, so the pontoons are necessary when the GM of the vessel so you know what is GM? GM is the vertical cent uh, distance between the center of gravity and the meta center of the vessel. That pretty much determines the stability of the vessel. So when the GM of the vessel gets smaller than one meter, uh, these pontoons become very necessary to be used. Or if the list is more than three degrees and it cannot be corrected by the use of healing tanks, then these guys are used as well. Uh, so they are uh, these pontoons are uh, attached rigidly to the sides of the ship uh, at a distance of about half a meter in such a way that the ship and the pontoon essentially become uh, like one component, one structure. So a pontoon, it consists of tanks that can be filled and emptied independently. So the pontoon increases the GM of the ship by about 0.4 to 0.8 meters. Again, depends on the type of ships. I'm just giving you a random figure here, a rough estimate, an average figure, an approximation here. Um, so the pontoon will increase the GM of the ship and the pontoon can transfer both downward and upward forces. So if the GM needs to be adjusted, if it needs to be reduced or increased, these pontoons can be used. So basically they are used uh, as weight components. They can be filled up with water and, you know, just to adjust the weight or to adjust the list of the vessel. And after use, these pontoons are emptied again and they are lifted back on board. So they are just used as a compensation mechanism. If you are lifting a heavy cargo and the ship starts to list heavily on one side and it is not being adjusted, or if you have placed the cargo, heavy lift cargo on the vessel now, and the vessel has taken a list and still it's not uprighting with the use of healing tanks, then these side pontoons are used just to upright the vessel or make sure that the GM is adequate for cargo operations to take place or maybe to adjust the draft. But once the operations are done, you empty these tanks, the mechanism is very easy, it's a self, uh, self um, uh, emptying mechanism and you empty these ones and you bring it back on the ship and secure it for the uh, next operations. All right, so I'll stop the video here now. I've been told by some of the subscribers that my videos become too long and I keep explaining the same point and uh, they have to watch it at higher speed. Uh, some people are never happy. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. All right, so I'll stop the video here now, guys. Good luck with your exams and let me know what you thought about this video. I look forward to your feedback and comments. Helps me to improve the videos for future. Bye for now.